uh, today's cast. Uh, Azarn, please say hello. Hello. Okay, Azarn, please give us a quick synopsis of your character. Uh, he is a former Lifewell chapter crusader who was removed when he realized, or when he stood up against a racist cleric uh, who was trying to imprison one of our party members. Okay. Um... We have, uh, okay, then, uh, Falco, please introduce your character. I guess. Um, also, change your fucking, fucking, change your fucking TeamSpeak name, Jackass. Oh, sorry, just a sec. Jackass, Jackass will make a decent substitute, substitute if you don't want to use your character's name. Shut up. Anyway, <laughs> um, let's see, brief synopsis, Zach, um, is going after his sister who was taken by a demon because his family's bloodline is packed into a demon, or a devil, derp. Uh, and he's also drawn the ire of said racist cleric. Alright, and you are playing a... Sorcerer. A human sorcerer. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, Chris, you are the... Chris, uh, Azarn is, a, is an Azamar. He's a uh, neutral good, you said? Yep. Okay, Azarn is our neutral good tank. Uh, our chaotic neutral human sorcerer. Uh, and then, okay, Sarissa is my character. She is a drow factotum jack of all trades. She's playing a rogue type. Uh, Sarissa, her grandparents were assassinated by the drow nation because her great grandparents were traitors to the drow nation and originally spies. Her mother and father are mobsters, and her life's goal is to prove herself uh, a worthy successor to her mother which means she's in competition with her siblings the entire time. She's a chaotic, neutral, uh, dual-wielding uh, bolt thrower. It's a hand crossbow variant. Uh, Spratic. Uh, yeah, so... what, what, what is your deal? All right, so to give you the short story, it was originally a very boring person raised by, you know, simple farmers in a village near the wildlands around the border the vi village fell victim to an orc attack a raid the raid itself was unsuccessful but it scared his family enough in which they fled to a forest and seek refuge to a close friend of theirs from the past who was an elf they basically lost their farm as a result of the attack and decided to live there instead Spratic was raised by the elves and was trained to be a sort of scout figure. That's how he gets all of his scout and roguelike skills. I am playing a rogue. Um, and while he was raised, he also took a liking for magic. He loves magic and all that it does, even though he's nowhere near good at using it himself. And after he got old enough, he said, you know, I'm going to go ahead and be an adventurer. I'm going to do my rogue stuff. He left, and now he's trying to find just magical stuff live life and get get loot and use that to support uh his family who's still trying to live out their you know lives in the forest with uh basically no assets all right uh no doing... no tragic backstories here no assassinations no just uh Oh, okay. what are you, what are you, what are you playing like? Fucking, what is this? Happy go lucky Rainbow Diablo times? Hell yeah! Your character it's hasn't murdered or tortured level. anybody. This isn't fun. Well, <laughs> I mean, he hasn't t murdered or tortured anyone that you know about. <laughs> okay. Sometimes. <laughs> you're, 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 sometimes. Okay, and uh, Jim, what are you playing today? What is your mercenary? Uh, Liliana Sunfury, she's a elven ranger, um, who is very, very, very racist against orcs. Amen. <laughs> what? Uh, there is no, no, there is no search anymore, Chris. It's just uh, perception. So plus two perception. I'll give a different plus two bonus later. Um, when she was a child, she watched her entire family murdered, and all kinds of other crap um she basically raised herself in the woods she's a ranger um she joined the bleeding eye so she could have better access to resources sorry my words are somewhere else 
Well, it's a good thing you're not writing posts now, isn't it? I'm not a poet. I am not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I'm retarded. Okay, so murdered by orcs, raised herself, joined yeah, the bleeding eyes. Joined the bleeding eye for the resources. Um, she takes pretty much any job involving orcs, because she's hunting for a specific clan of orcs. Um, and she wants them dead. She wants their mothers dead. I want. I want. Dead. I want them dead. <laughs> I want them and their tortillas okay, okay. dead. The, the, the amen I said before. I'm taking toting that a little back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and she's crazy. Okay, so I want your God. children dead. For anybody who missed, yeah. uh, interesting fact today: we don't have a healer. Um, <laughs> last uh, on our last episode of uh, Idiots with Swords, uh, a half celestial cleric by the name of Carlton held one artifact that could defeat a powerful pit fiend. He kept that artifact in a Selena dedicated temple around the life well of his village. This village is one for which Anzar had served as a member of the Well Chapter. Anzar turned his back on the village and, and their leadership when Carlton had led a baseless witch hunt against Zack in the past. Anzar had helped Zack escape, escape, Zarn. and was uh, Azarn, uh, Anzar, Azarn. Fuck your stupid <laughs> white names. Something uh, with an A in it. I was going yeah. to ask who Anzar was. <laughs> Azarn helped Zack <laughs> escape. <laughs> hey, at least I'm not calling him Tarzan, all right? And as such, was cast out of the village's well chapter. Carlton was seduced by the pit fiend, who also happens to be the source of the family pack Zack wishes to escape and rescue his sister from. No, shape shifted at the time. <laughs> yes, no, yeah. shape shifted at the time. Uh, who, uh, who gained access to the relic. Carlton covered his tracks, claimed the breach was caused by something else, and hired the bleeding eyes to clean up the mess the pit fiend had caused since the town's well chapter was indisposed at the time. Carlton didn't realize that either Zack or, 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 or Tarzan had joined the bleeding eyes. After a heated argument with Carlton, the group cleansed the temple, too late to save the temple's altar boy. They purged it of tainted, mutated rats. In the process, Azarn lost an eye to one of the beasts. After the temple was cleared of monsters, everyone but Sarissa left to tend to their wounds. When nobody was looking, Sarissa found a very expensive golden statue. Azarn played along with her story. When the group returned to the mercenary camp, they liquidated the treasure and split the money. The players were Azarn played by Chris, Abel, played by Doobie Tanner, is not here today, uh, Zach, played by Falco, and Sarissa, played by myself. There will be a YouTube link to, to past sessions as soon as I figure out how to make Twitch do what I wanted to do. Uh, that said, uh, there is one last thing that we didn't do last week that we will be doing this week when we set up today's adventure, and that is making certain that the story for today's adventure relates to the story of last week's adventure, because it is supposed to be an ongoing campaign. Um... So, we are going to... What do we have? We have a five, one, two, three, four, five, from right to left. We're going to pick which of the PCs is at the center of this plot. I am at the center of this plot. Okay. Uh, did you say from right to left? Uh, left he, to right. He did. But did he I? meant left to right. I meant left to right. Like, I, I, on the stream, you could see who I pointed right to the to characters. Left. Yeah, I mean, seriously, who goes, <laughs> who goes backwards? Uh, we're going to find a plot... From Sarissa. Then we're going to roll again and find an NPC from another character. All right. So uh, blah blah. Okay. So we are going with the assassination of Sarissa's grand, uh, great, uh, no, her, the assassination of her grandparents is relevant to this plot. Then we're going to go one d five. Who else? Uh, it's Braddock. Oh shit. How many NPCs are listed in your list of relevant NPCs? Uh, there are my two parents and the elder of my village. Okay, so we're going and, with and the and the elven friend of my parents who took us in. So okay, four. so so parents, I'm gonna count parents as a singular. Uh, we're gonna go parents. We're gonna go uh, parents, no elder, four. and family friend. I yeah, thought there was another sure. one in there. No, he said his two parents, uh, and not. your brain decided to count that as two. I'm counting that as one. Okay, so in this order, one is parents, two is elder, three is family friend. It's your family friend. Oh yeah, the uh, Ilsen. Ilsing. Okay, what can you tell us about this NPC? Uh, Ilsing is a quiet person, uh, quiet folk. He doesn't really get involved my, much of anything. He met my family when he was just doing a sort of scouting around when the village, when the Elven village was first being founded. He went around, told the neighboring areas to, you know, signs of good peace, uh, 
let everyone know what's going on so that they didn't just end up ransacking them later or like thinking they were barbarians or brutes or whatever. And um, that was about the same time that the human village that Fak was raised in yep. was being founded. And his family was, you know, like young, of course, back then. And they invited him to like, you know, dinner or whatever. And they hit it off. And that's how they got to know each other. And they kept close contact since then. Okay. Uh, a dispute of danger is at the core of our uh, is the core of our starting uh, plot concept. We so are we are, tying, we are tying we are tying a drow assassin cult that works for the drow nation against the dominion. The uh, the pit fiend and his magical artifact that he stole for unknown reasons. Uh, we don't know that Carlton was seduced. For record, Carlton was wise enough and rolled well enough so that nobody knows about that. Uh, so the pit fiend's magical artifact, the death cult. And the fan and Spradex family friend. Well, I mean, the easiest place to start with that is saying that because uh, the family friend there um, is uh, the scout type, and so it's easy for her to say that he came across something for the assassin cult uh, while he was out in the woods doing his woodsly business. Uh, the question is how we tie that back to the pit fiend. The move away from the thread, dispute of danger. Uh, it, don't worry about the moving away from the thread, although it might be a new obstacle to stopping the pit fiend that, that is part right. up. Well, I was thinking more that, like, what if the ranger is coming to us because there is an assassin cult after him? You know, maybe he the thing he found is something that both the pit fiend and the drow cult need. There's a dispute between the two sources of danger. Or, or okay, no, no, yeah, we're getting somewhere. What if uh, I'll toss I'll toss my coins in because basically that is everybody should be able to contribute uh, to to what's going on uh, if if their idea doesn't suck ass, Chris. So um, can't. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, what if what if he discovered the location of a drow assassin cult, and they are in league with the pit fiend? Yeah, that's too. I was thinking something like that if the the assassins had actually been hired by the pit fiend and maybe he's coming to the bleeding eyes because nobody else will listen dispute of danger he may well, have heard that i was there and knew that i would be one of the few people that would trust him oh right. what, what, uh, if the if they're working for the pit fiend what if he came across the pit fiend arguing with one of the assassins about their payment and then now they're hunting him and so he goes to a close family friend to offer him shelter or to uh, to get uh, rescued. Okay. Um, so, so, so Spradix, Spradix family friend is hiring the Bleeding Eyes to protect him from this cult? Yeah, and he had discovered the cult, uh, arguing with the Pit Fiend about their payment. Alright. Anybody wanna pitch in? Is that, a? is that good? Any more ideas? So the, the payment is where the dispute itself comes in. Right, right. I see. Um. So, uh, Spratic, do you mind role playing with yourself? Uh, <laughs> I mean, as long as no one's looking. <laughs> Good answer. How Good about answer. doing it? How about doing it live on the internet for us? Yeah, I don't mind doing a bit of role play. All right. Okay. So, so here's the scenario, right? Um. Here's the scenario, is that uh, your family friend is coming, bursting into the camp, uh, looking for you. Alright, so, I'm sure that we've shared letters before, so, looking at a few of the letters that we've exchanged across my adventure, he just tries to roughly map out where I would likely be. He mm -hmm. asks around, you know, one or two particular mercenaries that seem friendly enough. He doesn't want to draw a crowd, obviously. Right. So he'll ask one or two questions, try to get a lead on where Spratic might be, and just, you know, use the letters for some clues. Okay. He'll probably try for things like the mess hall, uh, maybe if he could find out where his tent is. All right. Well, I mean, let's have him run into out. one of our... Let's have him run into one of our characters other than you. Yeah, and go yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, okay. So, uh, so, uh, Spratic, do you have any particular friends at the camp? 
Uh, I've just joined the camp recently. Spadic's not the kind of person to really make friends easily, considering his line of business. Yep. So he doesn't really have any close friends, except for perhaps, uh, you know, anyone who shares his love of magic. Uh, I uh, hate magic. That would <laughs> says the Smith. <laughs> Fuck magic. Uh, the sorcerer is obsessed with magic. Uh, Sarissa is also really interested in magic, which is weird because she can't cast a lick of it. She's also yeah. an elf. She's a drow. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Uh, so you're probably not That's all racist. too close with we the don't drought. Like around uh, I'm sorry, I was raised by elves, and sometimes it just carries over, you know. Um, at least you weren't raised by dwarves. Then we might have then we might have problems. Uh, so of the camp of mercenaries, the one that might have stood out as you know a little bit trustworthy, a little bit you know like a decent guy, and not a like a, a cutthroat mercenary Who's the mobster only jackass. Other neutral good guy. That's <laughs> that's Azar. That that's would be me. that's the Azamar. Yeah. <laughs> He doesn't hate he magic. Has no, he has no feelings towards magic. Mm. Although he now has a super badass glowing eye. It's true, he does. That might that might spark a conversation between he and I. Okay, okay, yeah. So so in your letters you've mentioned this Azarn guy. Uh and, and Azarn is Azarn. not difficult to find, and so your 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 family friend whose name keeps slipping me can easily pick Azarn out of a crowd because he sticks out like a sore Azamar. That's <laughs> true. Excellent. Especially in a mercenary yeah. camp. What Asimars join a mercenary camp? Honestly. Seriously. I so then I would approach this Asimar. I would uh, Il Ilsin Ilsing is the name of the family friend. He would hail him. He's a bit meek. Like I said, he's quiet and also tends to keep to himself a little bit. Yep. So he tries to hail him meekly and ask for his you know a moment of his attention. Azarn says, no, fuck off, and goes back to playing with his Pokemon cards. <laughs> no, uh... He's too busy with his greatsword. Uh, <laughs> roll for corruption. <laughs> he... Go ahead. <laughs> um, he'll look up at him from sharpening his blade uh, with the glowing eye for dramatic effect. And then he stands and he says, uh, can I help you? He says, I'm looking for a human. Just joined, he uh, told me that he just joined the mercenary camp recently. You may have heard of him. He goes by the name of Spratic. I know most of the names around here. I'm sorry, I actually couldn't hear that. I know most of the names around here. I'm sure it, I could find them. It may help you, Spratic, to right-click on Azarn's name and change his volume individually. Uh, in TeamSpeak? Yes. I thought he was going to say Vendrillo. <laughs> No, on Facebook. Like, <laughs> uh, that'll help you with not being able to hear. Sweet, I think. Okay, so yeah, uh, you know, if you could please lead the way. This is my first visit in this camp. He'll stand up and he uh, slings the sword over his shoulder and starts walking through the tents. And he says, uh, "Is this a business or pleasure?" Strictly business. Is this going to be... Are you going to require more than just a single individual's help? I'm, I don't know. He, 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 makes an, he makes an active effort to try to not give away too much information. Well, give I'll a, stick around. Give me, a, give me a sense motive, Azarn. Oh, Jesus. Do I have any? You can roll it untrained. I've also got to set up a, uh, a a hidden role so that the player doesn't know what their fucking role is when they make a check like this and they're not supposed to get it. I got to set that up as as a uh, as part of a macro. I'll add it as the die roller and uh, preset. That's not the button I wanted. <laughs> Whoopsie. So here's a tip, Chris. You want the buttons that you want. That's that's a thing. I rolled a four. All right. So. Seems uh, legit. So, yeah, you're, whatever. You're pretty he, sure he's telling the truth about wanting to find someone. You, you, you're pretty sure, he want, pretty sure he he's telling the truth about what, about wanting to find somebody. Like, you don't get any sense that he's deliberately holding information. He's just make I don't. He doesn't know. Like, he's about to find out. And so are you. Isn't life wonderful? Aren't you so happy? <laughs> We're no, all I think, scrubs. I, I think that the I think that the phrase seems legit. Seems to summarize that up. Uh, yep. So he just says, uh, <laughs> "All right, uh, I'll stick around nearby. Just, uh, if you guys." 
need any help. And uh, he'll lead him to the tent. Alright, time to roleplay with myself, I suppose. Alright, so... Uh... <laughs> well, you've got a little help here. I mean, you you and Chris can roleplay with yourself. On, oh, yeah, on the yeah, internet yeah. live. And if you're ever uncertain, you can ask questions about your NPC and have it decide for you. Yep. yep. You can always just shunt your NPC off to Falco since he's not doing anything. It's true. You take care of him. Uh, so, I don't... Hmm. See, being raised entirely in the elf village, like, this guy doesn't travel very often. Despite being a scout, he mostly travels within his own area, except for those rare occasions where he has to make a diplomatic uh, discussion. Mm -hmm. So he's not sure what the traditions are in the camp. Like, does he just barge in the tents? Like, how does that work? He kind of sits there awkwardly. Um, <laughs> he would knock, but it's a tent. Can't knock on a tent, really. That's what ghost sound is for. Azarn just kind of... <laughs> I'm sorry, just kind of stands there watching this for a moment, just off to the side. We're all so, we're all so bad at this. Uh, and then after, after a moment, after watching this, he'll just kind of like walk up behind him and shove him through the tent and then walk back to where he was standing. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. That's right. amazing. Alright, so am I in the tent? I'm assuming I am. I, I don't know, are you in the you. tent? <laughs> Why are you asking questions about you? <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. Uh, okay, so do you want to hand off the NPC to be played by Falco? I don't know how to play his elf. <laughs> that's, fi that's fine, if there's any questions, Falco, we ask the fate chart. That's how that's this is meant play, to work. Play, just play elf. Just, just be a typical, he said he's meek, and you know the scenario he's in, right? So the guy is polite, and he's soft-spoken, and he's non-aggressive. Okay, that's all you right. really need to know. Any questions? Ask the fate chart. So, uh, so Spratic, you're gonna be in your tent, right? I you're suppose be... I am, uh, lazily, you know, practicing some sleight of hand. Okay. Right. So the, what did he want again? That escaped me already. Okay. <laughs> okay. He discovered a pit fiend and a drow assassin cult operating within the within the borders of the no. He's dis he's been discovered. Oh, right, he basically just wants protection, right? Yeah, he wants yeah. protection. Yes. Alright. So, uh, he'll kind of stumble inside, looking back, like, uncertain about how he just entered the place. Uh, he'll look at you like, um, it, it, ex excuse me, uh, is Spratic his name in game, too? Or did yes. he just yeah. not rename it? Okay. Yeah, yeah I am I very, very uh, boring. boring. Right. Like, uh, I'm sorry to have barged in like that. It wasn't entirely my fault, but uh, do you have a moment? So I, of course, freeze. I, I of course, freeze. See, someone just barged into my <laughs> tent <laughs> out of nowhere. Uh, so I freeze a sec. The coin I'm fiddling with drops to the ground with a thud. Uh, and it takes me a moment to process the person that's sit standing right in front of me. And I'm just like, oh, God. Il Ilsen, what are you doing here? And I like am really surprised, and I stand up, and I you know I eagerly shake his hand, and and the contrast between how soft spoken he is and how uh you know like uh you know overly not aggressive but like eager I am to like greet him is pretty obvious. But, like shake his hand and like it like vibrates through him and stuff like that. <laughs> like. You know, I, 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 I know I've sent you letters. You never mentioned the visit. I would have, you know, planned it out. I'd look at my tent. It's an absolute mess. I'm pretty sure that's like half a rat there. Like, uh, yeah. Well, you said to come to you if you ever, or if I ever needed anything, right? Well, I kind of need to call on that if you think you have the uh, availability. Of course, uh, a favor is always, I'm always welcome to help a friend. Especially when it comes to favors like these, what is a, uh, what is a problem? Yes. Well, the last time I uh, went out, I discovered something that I really never expected to see. You see, um, I swear it was a a pit bean that was talking to this group of drow. I I I, 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 I try to I shush him right right after he says that, knowing that sensitive information. This might not be the most private of places. 
um, he'll give like a sort of apologetic look like sorry and kind of lower his voice a fair bit i i whisper it to him in an exasperated tone a, a pit fiend are you serious uh yes and the problem is i'm pretty sure they saw me and probably don't want me knowing that they're working with one i wonder if azern hears any of this that sounds like an notice element, check or a perception check Yes, perception. If Azarn is inside the tent, he can hear it all, but if he's outside, he'll need a perception check. I think he just pushed him in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's standing outside. All right, so don't roll a three. Can you do that for me, Chris? He can try. Uh, he rolled exactly nope. a three. <laughs> So, uh, so as Arn, one, one, one of them, one of them fine honeys is walking by, and, uh, all you hear is church bells. Oh, hey, Sarissa. <laughs> uh, so, immediate, immediate question comes to mind. Was he followed here? I don't know. Uh, okay, what are the, oh, what are the, I'm saying, this, 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 this is a fake chart. Okay, so what are the odds, what are the odds of him being followed? Oh, is, right. is he? I'd say somewhat likely. likely. All right. Yeah, likely work. Likely. I say, I say, since he's a scout, maybe bump that to around an average chance. No, because I'd say it's very likely, and then the um, and then it would be bumped down to a likely. Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it is a drow would've... assassin cult. Right. We're talking about assassins. They would know how to track people. Yep. Yep. Okay. So. So. Yeah, let's uh, so likely. Likely. All right. I'll hit the button. Oh my oh, God. Very yes. Oh my they god. They are positioned all around the fucking encampment, and nobody's aware of it. <laughs> Actually, no, we don't know that nobody's aware wait, wait, of it. That's another we, question on the chart. Can we make some rolls there? <laughs> oh, okay. The very yes covers nobody's aware there, of it. There is a... So okay, the, 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 the bleeding eyes, setting-wise, the bleeding eyes, the mercenary camp. We are the finest of the fine when it comes to the people you can hire to do the jobs you want done. There is nobody better than the Bleeding Eyes. We make up the lowest ranks and the newest initiates of, of the group. Uh, but there are plenty of high-level mercenaries all over the place. Like, this is... You don't fuck with the Bleeding Eyes camp. And a drow assassin cult that is trying to not be caught would really serve themselves well by not making a, making a fuss here. Instead... They're probably going to wait until he's been handled and prepare for the prepare for the, the inevitable mercenary problem. Right. But but to like attack or set up or wait in line just outside the camp would not be in their best interest, and they would know that. Right. So maybe not like surrounding the camp for an ambush so much as they know where he is and they are waiting for any signs of movement that could relate to this. Right. right. And the very yes would be that they've managed to get that information back to the rest of the group. Right. So there is no just intercepting and no more problems. Right. Azarn is meanwhile striking up a conversation with Sarissa outside. Okay, so Sarissa's walking by Azarn. Uh, does Sarissa... She's got a Sarissa has a has a perception of better than uh, one. Uh, yeah, she's got a she's got a perception of she has four ranks. Uh, one mod is five. Oh yeah, so Sarissa overhears what's going on. Uh, and so Sarissa's Sarissa's hitting up a conversation with you, and she's she's doing that usual like she's not really paying attention to the conversation, but she's being polite. Right, uh, you've learned over over your engagements with Celis with Sarissa that she's very much uh, she's really direct and very honest, except when she's not, and you don't know when is which. Uh, and she's having a conversation with you uh, up until the point where uh, uh, is did he say uh, pit fiend? <laughs> not Ilsing. pit fiend. She doesn't give a shit about pit fiends. Ill seemed you said. Ilsing. Until Il Ilsing mentions that there are drow. Right, right. Um, and uh, and she will, she'll stop in the middle of the con like she's mid sentence, right? And she stops and she looks at you and she says, "Do you like killing things? Are they evil things?" And she just walks past you into the tent. <laughs> she just walks right into the tent and says, "All right." Um. And says, I'm in. 
<laughs> I would say he's going to freak out because you're a drow. Yeah, whoa, I would say yeah. That, that's, that's not, not good. good. Yeah. yeah. She no, no no he's totally gonna wake out. She just walks into the tent and goes, Alright, I'm down. Wait, wait, wait down wait. for what? She says Who are well, you? She she says How long have you been here? What was your name again? Sp Spratic? You're the new recruit? That's me. I'm Sarissa. Zarn walks in behind her. He's already got the great sword on his shoulder. I right. So, so, uh, okay. What was the elf guy's name again? Um, what elf actually? Elf. What is what? What is it? The, okay, yeah. Roll sense motive to size her up. That's how that works. I get confused sometimes because there's passive and and uh, active rolls now. Right. Um, what is it you want to pick up from her? Uh, I know that there's Drow after this person. Is she trying to kill him? Oh God, no. Is she capable? Hell yeah. But she's not, like, she doesn't even get... The only thing she cares about is that he mentioned that there were drow, and she is interested in handling the problem. Right, so he's, you know, the elf's going to, you know, freak out a bit at first, but then when he realizes you're not suddenly up in arms, and the guy that just <laughs> helped him is there too, he's going to slowly calm down. Uh, but still I'm not saying the anything. Assumption that, I'm making the assumption that she must have overheard what's going on in order to have just barged in. And That's a good assumption she, to make. <laughs> and if she knows what's going on, and she's not the enemy, then I might as well turn her into an ally. Right. There's also so, yeah. there's also a thing that, like, uh, while, while nobody's making anybody get along with anyone, fucking with each other when you're both part of the same merc camp is frowned upon. <laughs> there also happens to be, like, a seven-foot ace mark. Wait, which kind of behind her? Uh, uh, it, it is frowned upon to murder and or steal from your, uh, your, your, your co-workers. <laughs> Right. <laughs> As like the four rogues in the party are like, well, fuck, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, but no, she, she, what uh, dicks. Can I do it if they're dicks? Can I do it if they're a dick? Uh, so, 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 uh, she just like waits for everybody to stop. For, like she just doesn't even phase her, right? She said. Uh, she walks. She says, "I'm down." And there is this moment of like the of 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 the of the NPC like taking a step back, like whoa, right? And he stops. And he looks at everybody else. Everybody, else. And everybody is looking at everybody else, and the Azamar is completely chill. I imagine like she like in her head, she's just doing like the casual, "Hey, I'm in." But like to the NPC, she's doing like the infiltrative, like "I'm in." Time to execute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So. Right. Right. So where He's am I hard. during all of this? Uh, you are not here yet, but, uh, you're going to be dragged into it because you're really, you're really useful. Right. Yeah, so yeah. I'm And gonna... you do already know the pit fiend is a focus of his, and you did hear yes. that part, too. Yep, yep. Uh, she just hasn't told anybody anything yet because, well, there's drow afoot. Why does, why does she care about anything else yet? Right. Uh, but she'll, she'll grab you. Um, uh, so she says, uh, sh she'll turn to, uh, what's his name <laughs> It, it's Ilsing. Ilsing. Thank you. Ilsing. You know what? Let's uh, let's let's clone Carlton for a moment. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ilsing. An elf is an elf. Um, Ilsing. All these elves. I know, right? Ilsing will uh, uh, she'll she'll look at Ilsing and she'll say, "Okay, so you've got Drow on your ass, and you've got a Pit Fiend on your ass, and." She, and then, like, she does she does that fucking, like, badass cowboy thing where you twirl the guns on the trigger uh, along the, uh, like, the, 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 the trigger guard, right? On your fingers. But, of course, they're, right. they're, cro they're crossbows. They're bolt throwers, right? Uh, and she slips them onto their fucking, their little hook holster things on her on her thighs. She says, I think we can handle that. The ASMR looks thoroughly unimpressed. He's picking his teeth while the greatsword's over his shoulder. <laughs> we can Pick use all the help we can the get. I'm gonna... Sword? I'm gonna offer like you know like a like a handshake, be friendly and stuff. Be all like, yeah, we we would appreciate any help we can get on this. So so Spratic reaches out his hand, right? Uh, and the drought like takes a quick subtle step back as if she's as if she's under the impression this hand is meant for the Azamar. Right? Like she dodges the handshake just nonchalantly. <laughs> Well, I guess I'll shoot the Azamar then. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Zard just falls into it nicely. He just kind of like, leaves the great sword on his shoulder, shakes his hand, whatever. Um, so uh, I didn't steal the handshake. <laughs> I think I, I think I, I thought that was frowned upon. 
Uh, well, it's not really frowned upon with immaterial things like a handshake or a mother's love. Um. So she 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 turns uh, to Elsie. Got a mother issue. She says, "All right, so uh, you want him in on it, and uh, you want him in on it." And she motions to Spratic and to Azarn, right? Assuming that she that you know he knows Spratic because he's coming to Spratic for help. And then who doesn't want a seven foot Azimar with a great sword? in on right, it, right? right. Uh, and, and then she, she says, and uh, and I know some people who can help. Uh, you just have to tell us two things. One, uh, where did you find them? And two, how many of them did you lead to our front doorstep? As, 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 as Tradic, <laughs> I have a question. How does how does payment work in the mercenary camp? Okay, in the mercenary camp, basically, he will file a, a contract to the camp, and the contracts are posted, and anybody who wants to go on that contract is allowed to, to tag up on the job, and the, all the, like, for, as far as we as players are concerned, all of it's handled by the upper management of the, of the Bleeding Eyes. Um, right. We get paychecks and have dues, uh, and those are used mechanically out of game to keep people in line with the intended level of wealth for their level. So if we roll badly on the loot chart a few times, we get a nice bonus. Yeah, uh, but during the mission, any and all loot that the mercenaries acquire is theirs. I see, but how much does the client pay? Because it's very possible that my friend Ilsing here really only got money for a few guys. Right, it's right. Uh, right. he, only he purchases a contract and those have standard going rates. We're going to assume that he has enough, even if it's everything that he's got at the time. Um... Uh, if he pays, like, if you want to make it so, like, he's he's coughing up out the ass for this, uh, the the like, the fact that he's our quest giver and we're going to have this quest here assumes that he's going to be able to to start the mission for if, us. If he if like, he couldn't afford enough people, I know Spratic would offer his services for free. Yep. Um, and Spratic is free to do that. Uh, however, it, it's it's a it's 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 less than desired by the camp because they make the they make everybody's living doing this. Right. I see. Uh. Be right back. One sec. Um. Uh, so, uh, she, uh, Sarissa will turn to his arm, and she says, uh, uh, do you want to get the uh the girl foosh foosh dude from last time? Zach. Yeah. Um. Something tells me he's gonna want in on this. He shrugs, because he has no idea about any of that. I'll take, uh... I got a mouse over the token again. See, this is why I did this. I'll take Ilsing here and bring him up to the management and get the contract worked out. Alright. Meet us at the stables? As usual. Alright. So he'll head off to, uh, Zach's place. Okay, so we got one quick scene with, between Zach and Azarn coming up, and I'm gonna intro Jim, who's been patiently waiting this whole time. Um, so... Uh, Liliara. That yeah. L- Liliana. I typed what your name. I typed what your name in game. I'm sorry. No, I, I, it's it's Liliana. Okay. Um. So, uh, you are just like turning in a contract that you'd finished. Um. Uh, came up dry. There was no information on your orc tribe there. Uh, and you still like you know you gotta live. You need money. That contract was not particularly well paying. Right. Back. Right. And just as you are uh, about to head out, Sarissa, who you've seen around, um, you know her loosely from what you've heard. She's the daughter of a mo- of a of a of a mob boss, uh, and she serves as as a source of pretty lucrative connections for the for the camp. Um, she walks in with this nervous looking elf, uh, and just immediately starts working out a contract that sounds like it's going to be paying a a. a a bit and may actually need some assistance. Um, you have two options here. One, you can approach Sarissa right off, or two, you can wait for Sarissa to take the, the, the mission and post it up on the board. I will wait for the mission to be hosted to the board. All right. So after a quick conversation with the, uh, with the, with the management, uh, the elf signs a couple contracts. Uh, there's a shake and a shimmer of magic because you don't fucking backstab the bleeding eyes. They don't let that happen. Um, uh, the, uh, oh yeah! Thank you for the follow, Hide Zugu. Hide Hide Tzugu. Hide Zugu. You want me to turn thank Jim's you. volume up slightly because he's super loud in my ear. Uh, which character is it? Is it Liliana? Okay, Frank knows who Jim is. All right. Uh, do not make a complaint about Jim. I want to change volume. There we go. 
Okay, turning Jim up slightly. Okay, uh, so Sarissa will then walk. Well, she'll take the contract and she'll walk up to the to the job board and she'll just take like a like a bolt, uh, like a like an arrow that's sitting in a quiver that's hanging off the job board and just stab the contract paper onto the wall. Uh, she'll ring the bell a few times and then start heading off towards the stables. I'm just gonna grab the contract off the wall and follow her. Uh, there you go. <laughs> all right. Uh, so. Uh, Azarn and Zach, take it away. So Azarn walks up to the tent and he's like, I'm coming in, and he walks in. <clears throat> Alright, Zach's just kind of uh, sitting there, leaning Stop back on changing. the chair. No, he's not changing. He never changes. Ever. No. Um, he's uh, currently uh, toying with his new magic wand. Better prefix that. <laughs> Wow, wow, nice word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's just kind of uh, twirling it between his fingers like some fucking baton. And he doesn't even look at his arm like, what? Uh, Sarissa said, we've got a job you might be interested in. Why would I be interested in it? Uh, something about drow assassins and pit fiends? He'll kind of, uh, you know, blink at the mention of pit fiends. Uh, look over. Really? Uh, I suppose I might be interested in that. What are the details? Uh, apparently, the two were dealing with each other. A ranger came across them, and now oh, uh, he thinks he's yeah. uh, his life's in danger, which it probably is. He frowns a bit at that. What's that guy up to? First, he goes and steals this artifact from the stupid fucking Carlton. Now he's dealing with assassins. All right, let's go. I assume they're at the stable? Yep, yep. All right, he'll get up and move to follow. All right, thank you for making that clean and quick. We are then moving to the stables, okay, wherein uh, Sarissa is sitting there, like, just kind of chewing on uh, chewing on a toothpick, going over her, her bolt throwers, like, making certain all the mechanisms are still working, checking how sharp her dagger is, going over the vials of poison she keeps on her thigh that I didn't buy, so I don't actually have for any purposes beyond the thematic and narrative purposes shifty eyes uh, water. Yeah, <laughs> she, she hasn't learned to do it properly yet. Uh, it's decorative and uh and there's also uh one of the new girls um an elven ranger is 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 kind of hanging out of the stables um so as everybody gathers up you uh jim take it away how do you get in how do you muscle in on the cool on the cool christmas card that what? <laughs> the Christmas card? Some somebody handed me a Christmas. I get to open a Christmas card. I hope there's Ignore money. Oh, the ADD. Inside. Carry on. <laughs> Carry on. My ADD is strong. Lily uh, says just says she's going with them. Just uh, just declares. Just says I'm coming with. Just going. Zach will kind of look at her and be like, whatever. He doesn't really care. That's how it works here. <laughs> Sar Sarissa shrugs to say, job's a job. <laughs> Azar, like, he, like, he stands up and he peers, it looks in close, and then he shrugs and walks off. Spratic raises a finger um, as if to ask a question, but then seeing how all the other mercenaries shrug it off, he's like, I probably, you know, this is probably just how it works. I'm just going to let it happen. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm picturing Spratic's character as, like, a giant version of the, the new meme that's been going around Reddit lately of, like, I don't know blank, but at this point, I'm afraid to ask, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, right. I'm sorry. She, Liliana is just kind of, she doesn't, she has, she's a woman a few words. Um, uh, no money no in money it. Sorry, red face. red face. Okay, so. What, what's she armed with? Like, what weapons she has, does she have on She her? has a short bow and um, a hand axe at her hip and a dagger at her at the other side. All right. Okay. Um. So it's gonna be uh we'll we'll call this a day's travel away because uh, a drow assassin cult is probably not anywhere near you know the rest of civilization where they could be easily discovered by magically empowered guards from cities and shit. Right. <laughs> I honestly think that uh the first scene should definitely be them getting ambushed on the way to their location as soon as right. they hit. Okay. Not I'm I'm good with that. I, I actually like that idea. Yeah. 
Okay, so uh, so Chris, you're the one with the idea. Do you want to throw us together a, a map with like a windy, dirt, gravelly road and like some grass and maybe a tree or two? Make it a decently sized battlefield, please. We have an archer. We have two archers on the field now. Uh, you're the one with the map tiles, though. Um. Okay. Uh. So, is there anything else we need to? Okay. Somebody generate a combat encounter. I'll Chris, do that. you'll do that. I'll 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 doodle I'll doodle us a map because you're bad at map doodling, if you recall. Uh, I am, as a matter of fact. Why should it just be like CR one eight thing, so the drow are sending rats after us? Whoops. Why is that not? All right, so we're gonna give ourselves like a road. Oh, there it goes. Okay, and then we're gonna flip this window over here. Oh wait, uh, oh, I'm not station. actually set as middle management, so I can't see that without no, no, messing over it. Nobody can because there's no middle management setting. You have to you have to highlight it and read it, and nobody else gets to see what there is. Did so I draw that on the top? Don't read it, right? Yeah, don't read it unless you're Chris, because he's he's gonna be uh putting together. That bullshit. I'm an idiot. I'm still an idiot. I am even worse of an idiot. Man, what is that? Uh, me being bad. Pay no attention to the uh, great gym in the sky fucking up the road. There we go. That'll do. Flip back to the object. We can paste this shit and like flip it around like so. And then we need like some trees and shit, y'all. Oh, it's all about them trees. Do I have some trees? You know I'm all about them trees. trees about, about them, them trees. trees. No. No rubble. Rubble. <laughs> We're bad people. Um. Um. How do I? How do I initialize initialize one of these tokens? Okay. What token do you want to use? I would like a two human warrior skeletons and a goblin. Okay. So what you need to do, okay, um, is you are going to take the human warrior skeleton. Right? Uh, come up to the map with me here, because uh, there's spoilers now, but whatever. Um, take the goblin, co uh, copy-paste them here. Here are two human warrior skeletons, right? Yeah. Boom, boom. Okay, so, I'm going to delete one of these. You are going yeah, to crack open your monster manual. Okay. Yeah. Or the uh, SRD. Or, or the SRD, okay. Then you're going to double-click on the token to bring up its properties and fill out the things. When it asks for HD... Just uh, when asked for HP, just type in the full formula for HD as listed in the monster mail. Do not give the average hit points. Okay. Um. Oh fuck! No, don't 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 click that. That's bad. Uh. And I assume it's not the full formula for AC. Uh, no. Just give the AC, touch AC, and flat-footed AC with a T and an FF for the other two fields. Um, once it has been initialized, or once you have typed it in, right, um, the mm -hmm. last thing you can do is you can add the presets. Uh, be certain to delete all the presets by going into the preset variables in the in the token properties and just nuking all the contents of that stuff. Then add the uh, presets for their attack, damage, and crit damage for each weapon. I assume I don't need to fill out their corruptions. No, you don't. Uh, you don't need to give corruptions to them. Uh, no although it is almost separating the flat-footed and stuff. No, it doesn't matter if you put flat, flat footed with commas because none of the macros actually use those things as math. That's just us for to mouse over and see what we need to hit. Uh, there's also going to be... Fuck it, we're going to add a camp, I think. I'm still waiting for those trees. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm also waiting for those trees, bro. For real. Uh, view, show, grid. How big is the campfire? Yeah, it's about... Yeah, that's, that's about right. Okay, so that's about the right size for that. Object. Oh, that's on the background, isn't it? Okay, yeah, I'm gonna fucking like rotate it like this. Um. How many horses are we taking? One for each One person? One each, probably. Uh, yeah. Not a war pony, right? <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck is the... What do we got? We got a... 
we'll go we'll go with the light horses. How many? That's uh one, two, three, four, five of us, right? You said delete all the preset names, dice, mods. Yeah, yeah. Before you start adding those presets. Um, is this not including my client? Uh, your client is staying behind at the camp in order to not be assassinated, because they followed him, and they and we're, it, we can't we can't be too safe. Uh, Sarissa, who you, who you who you are getting the idea, really understands the mechanics of an assassination. Is really insistent that he should stay behind if he wants to live. Got it uh, confirmed. Friend's gonna die when I come Don't back. come with He's me if you dead, want dead. to live. <laughs> all right, so we got our our horses all like tied up over here. This is important because if your horse dies or is wounded in such a fashion as not to be easily healed, uh, you pay for the fucking horse. Um, um, you buy it. Is yep. the skeleton set up correctly, Grant? Double checking. Uh, I'm opening his token states, uh, his token properties to look. Uh, HD. Um, nice. Give everything one. Uh, I'll I'll do this here uh, because I'm assuming you've uh, X'd out of the fucking token editor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, for future reference, give everything one SP. Uh, one max corruption, zero corruption, zero depravity, one max depravity. Uh, you left out its initiative modifier. What is its initiative modifier? It should be there. It's five. Okay, it's not there, but I'm putting it there. Uh, and then everything is good. Oh, except okay. its attacks. Yeah, you need to attacks. you need to add its you need to add its presets. Um, this will take less time in the future because we'll have less setup time to go through in the future. Uh, okay, so meanwhile, everybody's tokens for everybody that's present. I'm gonna copy paste. I'm gonna grab you. I'm gonna paste you over here. Um, so, uh, who's keeping watch? In what order? Not, not it. Uh, um, I'll, probably... I'll go first. Oh, before we fucking forget this time too, I have my goddamn bat with me. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, can you? Here's here, here's your bat token up here by the camp. All right. Can you do me a favor and set up your bat familiar stats? Oh God. I guess I'll try. <laughs> while while Chris is setting up those tokens, okay. So uh, actually, the the drow would posit that since the elf doesn't have to sleep, she makes better for second watch, and third watch. I I, I would probably take first watch if I could. I've got a low light, so I can take second. So we have one volunteer. We have three volunteers. I'm mad. It's on, important uh, I get my sleep. Sounds like. <laughs> All right. Um. No, you can't sleep in your armor. Before anybody asks. Uh, no. Uh, that shit is uncomfortable as fuck. Not to mention, uh, you really don't want to stink that badly. Trust me. All right. Well, I mean, I have the I least. Have to you'll lose. take a sickening penalty. <laughs> we'll nauseate you all I'll day. A I'll become a troglodyte. How do I actually? Um, because I put in the max HP, but it's not giving them a bar. Uh, don't, don't do that yet. You put in the HD, correct? Oh, I put it in max HP. Uh, put the H, their HD goes in the hit point field. Um, and don't, they, they won't have a health bar until we've set up the, until we initialize the monsters. We're not going to actually use the monster HP roller on these. These are going to be like the default tokens that we copy paste around. Is it HP or max HP? HP. Okay, that, I did it right. Okay, so, uh, Sarissa's taking this tent. Uh, Spratic is going to take first watch, but your watch is going to go fairly uneventfully. Who's taking second? Uh, Azarn, uh, you can... You Liliana. Can, you can take second, but Liliana doesn't have to sleep, so she can actually take the rest of the watches. Okay, that's fine. Okay. It's if, 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 uh, if Azarn isn't insistent. No, he's not gonna be insistent. Hey, could, is do I have the ability to change my character sheet? Change like, your character's like token. Yes, you do. I'm sorry, I haven't set up your shit yet. Uh. How do I set up the uh, presets? Um, you click the, you select your token, right, and then you hit, yeah. uh, you hit the the presets. After you've cleared out all the presets in the token, right, you 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 click the target, you select, and then you select the presets next to the dice roll dice button. Type up the name, the dice, and the modifier you want to add. Then select. Add new preset from the drop down and hit OK. 
Wait, do drow sleep? They're elves too. Drow do not get the elven uh, sleep mechanics. Oh, okay. Okay, um, didn't know that. Yep. Uh, the the stats that are listed in the on the on the website are all the stats there are, which means that Azamar and Tieflings are not considered outsiders either. They are humanoids. That was part of bringing them off of being a level adjustment race. Um, any complaints about the, the setup? Looks good to me. Yep, we're good. Um, so it's got to be a preset attack, preset damage. How do I change the crit values? Uh, you, you, you roll the, uh, we just know that typically a monster will crit on a 20, right? Or you can, you can add the crit range to the name of the attack if you want. Um, but the, you're gonna, you're just gonna list a normal damage roll and a, and a crit damage roll as separate preset rolls. Um, everybody is pretty much set for this being the camp setup. Uh, now I know I have trees here somewhere. Should the horses be that far away from us? Somewhere around here. Uh, That's fine. Okay. I really don't want my horse to get hit. I don't trust him. Nobody should trust anybody. Hmm. Did we, we label the horses to do not be trustworthy? Say what? I said, did we label whose horse is whose? Uh, you know what? Uh, we'll do that now. Oh, you know, easy enough to set it up to match the same circular pattern. One on the oh, upper left, oh. one up top, one to the right, one right below them. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. So okay, this so... one is going to be Spratic's horse. I'm naming them. Spratic's horse. Uh. Jimiana's horse. And this one is his arms. Uh, and his arms is like over here because I fucked that shit up real quick. Like, this one is uh, Zach's horse. Not Rose. Alright. Um, between next week and, uh, this week and next week, I would like, uh, Falco and Chris, if you guys want to sit down and, like, prep a bunch of the monster tokens, that'd be great. I'm sure it would. Wouldn't it? Um, okay, the last thing I am going to do is, uh, uh, I'm going to assume everybody has torches that they can easily light off of the fire, except for me because I have dark vision. Fuck you, people. I have a lantern. Okay. Uh, uh, I use the light spell generally. Okay, light source. You're going to have a lantern, right? Uh, we assume that's hooded. I have flint and steel if I need to light the lantern. Uh, uh. I and, thought you said we weren't doing the light source crap. We're going to or do the light source crap because it's going to be happening night, but we're not going to be doing like range of sight or fog of war. This is just to determine like whether or not you can actually fucking see something. Um, and we'll, okay. just, we'll, just, we'll just use people to do this. Uh, Jim, your character's going to be using a torch, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, Zach, you're using a light spell, which is as torch, correct? Right, but it won't be active until, you know, I get up. Well, yeah, I'm totally well, yeah, gonna. Totally. I'm just. I'm. I'm. I'm giving it ahead of time. Uh, gotcha. And uh, torch for Zach and Sarissa has dark vision out to sixty range. Um. So. Yeah. Uh. That's set. Oh, uh, Chris, did you volunteer to be middle management? Is that why you're doing this? I'm. I'm still setting up tokens. Okay. No, that's fine. Uh. Okay, so uh, so Spratic said he was going to take first. Uh, the path up north from the camp, we'll fucking pick a random direction, uh, is a long and rather untraveled one. Uh, north of the camp is heading towards the mountains, uh, but we're still in, uh, so it's getting colder, right? Think like you're making a trip from, say, uh, Riften to Winterhold. Uh... 
And so you're making we're making that transition from more temperate stuff to colder stuff. Uh, the camp that we strike, uh, we strike because it's time to eat, rest, give the horses a break, drink, uh, and bundle up because it's starting to get real fucking cold-like. It's not snowing out here yet, but 